The Remnant 2 community has finally solved the biggest puzzle in the Awakening King DLC and I'm finally putting together the pieces in my own run to get this gun so I'm going to share with you guys how you can get the Anguish handgun. This is the handgun at the top of a lot of people's wish list because it is a handgun and so it pairs nicely with a lot of the really strong long guns that we have in the game already. The solution and path to unlocking Anguish in Remnant 2 is a lot easier than it looks at the start you're gonna need a campaign run after the DLC and you're gonna have to reroll some of your adventure mode but once you get a handle on it it's actually pretty easy and you're gonna have this handgun in no time all right let's go over the steps to take to get anguish the first step is to roll a new campaign post DLC so that you have all these pieces in it. There are some storylines that are gonna help make it easier for you to travel around since you'll already have them completed in the campaign. You won't have to roll a separate adventure. However, this is not required, but if you want the perfect campaign role, then you want to look for the Red Throne storyline in Yesha, the Forgotten Prison in Nerud, and Moro Parish in Lawsome. If you can't get all three in one campaign, that's totally fine. I would aim to get Nerud and Lawsome at least because those you're going to have to run through that full area in order to get the location where the Dran is going to be sitting. And a lot of this is going to make sense after you watch the whole video, but just know that you need to create a post DLC campaign, you need to run through it all the way up to Root Earth. You're gonna wanna complete the train event on Root Earth so that you don't have to complete it after we start this. Because once we start the process of getting this English handgun, you can't die. So this is why it's important to get those storylines in the campaign if you can, because there's less room for error that way. All right, now that you have a campaign role after the DLC and you've progressed it up to Root Earth, you've gotten those storylines if you can. The next thing you wanna do is probably the most time consuming, and that is rerolling an adventure mode to get Lawsome and get a couple burning dungeons so that you can look for the Ethereal Manor injectable. Now this is a new DLC injectable where you go into the manor, a Dran grabs you and it's kind of like Groundhog's Day where you're just gonna keep getting grabbed and respawn and grabbed and respawn. Now the point is to get it idle, but not in this case. In this case, you're gonna use Liquid Escape, which is a consumable that everybody has that basically kills you so that you respawn at your last checkpoint. We're gonna use the Liquid Escape. Now a lot of people probably didn't read the book inside the manor, but it says the only way out is to escape. And and this was kind of the first clue that you needed to use Liquid Escape. And I really want to know if there's anybody out there that actually did use Liquid Escape on day one, because I know there were a few people that were talking about it, but I haven't seen someone that actually did it based on what was in that book. Once you wake up, you're going to be in the consecrated throne room on top of the king's throne. You're going to see the Crimson Dreamstone. The Crimson Dreamstone says crit hits increase skill damage for 1% for 10 seconds, max stack 15. After you you grab that ring you're going to make your way back to ward 13. We have now started the anguish quest line you cannot die so do not die from here on out until we acquire that anguish gun. This is why I said the more that you can pack into your campaign run and already have ready to go, already have those travel points ready to travel around to, it's going to be a lot easier and a lot less room for error. But once you get back to the ward, you're going to come down here where Ford sits when you start the campaign and you're going to talk to the Dran down there. He's going to tell you to wake up and you'll be flashbanged and <laughs> sent on your way. The next step is to go to Yesha. Now, if you have this in your campaign, go to it on campaign mode. If you don't, you could reroll Yesha for the Red Throne and then go there. This is at the very beginning. You don't even need to trigger the cutscene or anything like that. So this one is a super easy one to get to on adventure. So if you don't have it in your campaign, that's okay. We had it in our campaign. So I'm going there in the campaign. You're going to take this first right. Just be aware of the couple enemies there. If you didn't do it in story mode, they will be aggressive towards you. So just be careful. But you're going to go all the way around around to this room with a chest and you'll see the Dran on the wall. You're going to talk to him. He's going to give you some voice lines. The voice actor, by the way, for this guy is 
absolutely amazing. And you're gonna get flash banged again. And now we're gonna go back to the stone and travel to Labyrinth. Now this is gonna be in your campaign mode, obviously, since we can't roll an adventure for Labyrinth. You're gonna go to the main checkpoint and you're gonna go behind the big portal and that is going to be your next strand that you need to talk to. You're going to talk to him, get flashbanged again. For our next location, we need to go to Nerud Forgotten Prison. Now, like I said, if it's in your campaign mode, you could travel straight there into the second room, into the boss room where the big crystal is and talk to the Dran. However, for me, we had to roll adventure. So I'm just showing you guys how you do that. You roll for adventure till it says forgotten prison, and then you're gonna go straight to Nerud. Because this wasn't in our campaign, we actually had to run through Nerud. If you have to do this for Nerud or Lawsom, look for the doors with the explanation marks on them and go to those. You're gonna have to fight a mini boss to get to the next map of Nerud. And then you're gonna wanna look for the boss door. You don't need the soul spark or anything like that that's going to progress the boss fight you just have to find the door so this is what the door looks like a huge door with a very tall yellow door there so you're going to go through there and inside that area next to the large crystal is where you're going to find the next strand that you need to talk to all right once you talk to him now it's time to go back to your campaign playthrough and go to root earth now because we already went to some other checkpoints we can't just go back to that little checkpoint by the fence so as long as you've cleared the train event you're fine you're gonna have to clear a few more enemies on your way over there but you just want to make your way back to that small checkpoint by the fence once you get over to that guy you're gonna talk to him and get flash banged again let's go back to our adventure mode we're gonna be re-rolling our adventure for Nightweaver, which is morrow parish starting point like i said if it's in your campaign just go back to your campaign go to the night weavers area in that dream world so you want to be in the second state of the asylum where you have already gone through and killed the mini boss and then you're coming back through so for our adventure mode we had to kill a mini boss to get to the second area of Lawsome, and then we had to kill the red prince to get back to the night weaver's web and get that soul key tribute so that's the normal progression of that world in a campaign so if you didn't do it in the campaign you're gonna have to do it in adventure you're either gonna get the red prince or the magistrate which the magistrate has an animated like one shot ability where he snatches you so i would highly highly recommend especially if you're solo getting this world in campaign so that you don't have to chance it with a one shot like that but once you're back at the asylum you're gonna go downstairs you're gonna put the soul key tribute in there or if you're in campaign, just go over to the Duran. And then once you've traveled to that realm, you're gonna go over here to the left by the sewer grate and you'll find the Duran over there. This is your last Duran that you need to talk to all while doing this without dying. You're gonna get the Duran's dream consumable. Go ahead and use it either Put it on your hotbar or i think you can double click it if you are on pc and that's going to take you to the dran stream the forgotten null you're going to see the last dran sitting there on the coast checking out the nice sunset or sunrise and i'm not really sure if you can tell the difference but right next to him you're going to find the crafting material that you need to craft the anguish which is the occult vessel so pick that up admire the view and make your way back to the ward you're going to talk to mccabe and she is going to be able to craft you the anguish handgun the mod for this handgun says rapidly fires volatile needles that explode after 1.5 seconds dealing 30 explosive damage so now we have something else to add to any explosive build which is pretty cool when you shoot this you're going to want to try and time up the two circles and shoot when they match up to get the most bang for your buck literally and then the mod you're inserting those needles in you're just holding down the trigger and then they're exploding so i don't know if people have been experimenting with explosive stuff but let me know down in the comments if you are using this gun and what you think of it if you enjoyed this video and want to see more remnant 2 guides definitely subscribe to the channel give this video a thumbs up to help me push it into the algorithm i appreciate you guys so much and i'll see you in the next one bye